It's great to welcome to the program today host of the Don Lemon show, Don Lemon, who we were recently talking about because uh, there, there's a lot going on. Don, it, this is so timely and I'm so glad to have the opportunity to talk to you about it. I'm so glad to be on your program. Thank you for doing this, David. So to start with the context here, the last 72, 96 hours, you're launching a new show, launching the mm -hmm. show with this extremely interesting interview with Elon Musk. And in just the hours after the filming of the interview, not even the release, it is revealed that the contract you had with X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, was being canceled by Elon Musk. Now, I may not be using the right terminology and you'll tell us that. So let's start there. What was the plan in terms of what you were going to be doing with X and the circumstances of how you even sat down with Elon? Your terminology is correct. Okay. Contract cancel. That's a quote from Elon Musk okay. from a text that he sent to my representatives. So the terms of the contract were I was going to be doing a show on my own anyway, which was which is produced by my production company, LMN, uh, which is Lemon Media Network. But we call it L LMN. Yep. So we were going to post on you know every streaming platform, including iHeartRadio, Spotify, um, um, uh, YouTube and what have you. X wanted a distribution deal on top of that, on top of the three episodes that we ran every week. I think they wanted 10 videos per month, uh, and, which were exclusive to them, which had to be maybe 10 to 12 minutes, uh, exclusive to them for 24 hours. And then after that, it would run everywhere on all streaming platforms. So that was it. The show was not produced by X. They had nothing to do with it. They did not get to see it. All we were doing was giving them some extra exclusive content for 24 hours. And that was it. That was our relationship. So, of course, you're free to post whatever you produce on X right. anyway. But the point is that that exclusive 24 hour embargoed content, that's the part that's been canceled because of the way the interview went. That's the only reason as far as you understand. Well, no, no, Dion, not just that part, but in the contract, there were incentives for growth on the plat platform. There were incentives for, uh, not incentives, there were promises of amplification, amplification um, of, you know, if I brought um, advertisers back to the platform, that there were incentives there because, you, as you know, they were struggling um, a lot of advertisers left the platform because yep. it had become it was becoming so toxic and so right wing conspiracy theorists. Um, and so there were uh, there were multiple incentives for different things. Uh, and yes, there was, you know, um, there was money on top of it. Right. There was a financial incentive in there, financial incentives. So one would assume that all of that is canceled right now. There was a rumor that it included a cyber truck. Is that true? That's all. Listen, that's all nonsense. I'm not going to let the distraction, clearly a distraction from X, um, to try to, you know, they're trying to distract from the interview. The interview is what's important. That's all nonsense. And I don't even want to, you know, feed into that because I think they're, they're intentionally trying to distract from Elon Musk's performance or just the interviews to get people talking about something else. Not exactly the most practical car in Manhattan anyway, I would say. But but uh, OK, so so I understand that now. So that that part is all canceled. Now, did anyone try to stop the publication of the interview itself in this interim few days? I'm not sure what was happening behind the scenes. They did ask us. They were very concerned about the interview. And, and let me just preface and I'll answer your question. Um, we told them this was not a gotcha interview. We don't understand why he's so upset. Was it uncomfortable at times? Absolutely. But many interviews are uncomfortable at times. That's what journalists do, right? We hold people accountable and being held accountable is not always comfortable. So um, you, we went back and forth. And once we spoke to um, some of the, well, at least one person at X, they, they asked us to see the interview before it aired, which as you know, is a big no-no. We do not do that. Yep. So I, I'm not sure behind the scenes if they were trying to, you know, stop the interview from running. I do know that we had some issues with the platform this morning that we had never had before when trying to post the interview, but uh, it ended up posting. Um, so and listen, there are also questions about suppression on the platform that I think people should be journalists should be digging into. Um, yeah. 
were you asked before about what you were or weren't going to talk about or given restrictions, asked for questions in advance or any of the stuff that publicists sometimes do? No, uh, I know that publicists do that. And, and that is that may be OK in the entertainment world. I don't work in the entertainment world. So I will give people an idea of the, the, the questions, right? The topics that we're going to cover uh, that we would like to cover in the interview, but never questions and no restrictions. And I say that in the beginning of the show, if you, if you watch it, I say, as with all of my interviews, there were no restrictions, nothing was off limits. And that's how I conduct interviews. So, you know, I, I let them know that. David, I let them know that before I joined the platform. I told them that I had questions about joining the platform, that I was reticent, that I really didn't want to do it. I turned them mm -hmm. down several several times. They kept pursuing me and I and they kept sweetening the deal, offering incentives. And I said, okay, if I join this platform, number one, I want to do it because you have a huge audience. There are, I think, some 550 million users a week on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. So that's a huge audience. I also said, I don't think that that, platform should be ceded to extremists, extremists and conspiracy theorists. So if I can get in there and I can fight it out and I can be, uh, 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 excuse me, authentic and I can get my point across and I might even have to call out the person who owns the platform. And I said, if I can do that, then I'm okay. And they said, yes, you can do it. And I think he would actually welcome that. And I said, okay, great. Well, let's move ahead and try to work this out. And we did. And when I did exactly what they wanted me to do on the platform, they cancel the contract. Now, if I can go on and tell you something that I've noticed because I've been in traditional media for a long time, yep. right? Everyone's in silos. The streaming part of it, uh, of this business, the, the streaming part is really dominated by conservatives. They do quite well, usually do better than people who are centrists or left-leaning. And so I just think that they are in such a silo Elon Musk and others like him are in such a silo that they don't hear different points of view and they don't like to be questioned about it. And when someone does question them and, and when they are presented with facts, it's very uncomfortable and they decide to take their toys and go home because they really can't deal with it. They've, no one has ever told them the truth. They just keep, keep hearing their own points of view, their own conspiracy theories from people who love them all the time. And well, that's one aspect really... to it. I wonder if yeah, the other they're... aspect is, though, that maybe Elon assumed that because you stand to benefit financially from the platform, you just wouldn't ask him real questions. Like maybe that was it because he comes off as unprepared to even as I said, when I analyzed the interview, he could have had some very simple talking points to rebut your questions, we would all yeah. be we would all react by saying he's not really answering it. But at least it would have passed the sniff test of this guy's coming off terribly unprepared, et cetera. I wonder if he just assumed no one would ever bite the hand that might feed them, for lack of a better term. Well, two th <laughs> right. Uh, two things. Um, Elon Musk. Is running the company, make no mistake about it, my deal. Every aspect, every point of my deal went through Elon Musk. So there was no question in my mind, unless someone didn't inform him, about what I was going to do and how I was going to be on the platform. So if Elon Musk thought that he bought me or that I was going to pull punches because he, you know, was, you know, I had a, a deal with him and a, a distribution agreement, then he was quite wrong. The entire reason they wanted me to do this is for my point of view and to be who I am. So um, I, I don't know, but I, I think here's the interesting part. I think he came off better in the interview than he thinks. Hmm. I think he actually had some good answers to questions, especially about his ketamine use, yeah. it's about depression. He, you know, I, I understood some of what he was saying about um, about the platform and hate speech and what have you. And there's a lot of stuff on the platform and in mainstream media there, you know, you don't have so many people using it every day and you have 20, 30 stories and that way you can sort of monitor, you can monitor them a little bit and um, uh, monitor them more. I understood that, but um, if he thought that I was going to, you know, he bought and paid for me, he was quite wrong. And I think anyone who uh, thinks that if they hire me or use my services in some way would be quite wrong at the end of the day. David, I am a journalist and that's what I do.
There were moments during the interview where he would mention that he's very short on time and that there's a room full of people waiting to hear from him and that this is sort of like a favor because you are going to be on X and it's all like not something he would normally do. What what are this like? What was this room? How much time were you told you had versus him insisting he's short on time? It felt manipulative as I looked at it. Uh, you mean on his part that he yes. was trying to manipulate me? Yes. Yes. So uh, the the only thing that they wanted, and they said there were no restrictions. They wanted at least an hour, and we said, "Well, that's great because we don't want sound bites." So that is one thing yep. that they wanted, right? I could have gone ten minutes, uh, but they said they would like to have at least an hour. They didn't say an hour and it's up. They said at least an hour. And we were like, "Great, we'll go as long as we want because we want to have a great interview. We don't want just sound bites." So yes, I think. Um, towards the end, which wasn't, I thought, I thought we were just right in the middle, right? But it was the end for him. It started <laughs> to get increasingly more uncomfortable because I kept presenting him with facts and he couldn't really, you know, answer for them um, about DEI, you know, as it relates to medical schools and, you know, the airline industry, et cetera, et cetera. And he just kept saying, well, let's wait until this airs and and see what the the comments will be on Twitter or on X. And I said, and I said to him, comments aren't facts. They're not evidence. And so that he didn't like that. He did not like being presented with facts. Do you worry at all now that the interviews out your channel is live, which we're linking to? You're doing a bunch of interviews about this. Do you have any concerns at all that th they may try some kind of legal action with regards to the interview? And I ask that with the, with the same perspective as you that he comes off kind of like a prick, but not as mm -hmm. terribly as maybe like as you're pointing out, some of his answers are fine. It's just his opinion yeah. about a number of issues. Like it's not really that damaging based on what's known about the guy. No. For, and I said to him, well, not to him, but to, you know, his his management team for someone who says he doesn't care what people say and think about him. He certainly does care what people think and say about him. Mm. He, and I, I don't think he comes off that bad. I think I don't think he comes off terribly or, or, or unlike what we think Elon Musk is like in the interview. Right. I just think sitting there, David, and answering questions from someone like me who has a different perspective and a different worldview was just too much discomfort for him to deal with. And he did not, he's not used to answering questions at all. He's not used to being held accountable. And I just think that was it for him. And, you know, I think more of it was this, I think more of it was this, just the sitting in the interview and answering questions rather than the finished product. And we kept saying, why don't you wait till it airs? If you want to wait till it airs and you want to cancel the contract, that's fine. But you don't even know what it's going to look like. You don't even know what the, what the final product is. And I would just, I, defy anyone, including Elon Musk, to take a look at that entire interview and tell me why that isn't exactly what they need on that platform and why isn't it what he said he wanted from me on the platform. I was mm. not disrespectful. I did not raise my voice. I thought the questions were fair. I dug in as a journalist does, and it's uncomfortable for people. I followed up and that's it. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. I think my biggest takeaway from all of this, and I said this last week when we talked about it, is that and I didn't say this as a criticism of you. A lot of the questions weren't really that hard, but by no. the standards that in many in the United States have become accustomed to, it's considered controversial or adversarial. Whereas like yeah. in my birth country of Argentina, if you watch interviews with with lawmakers there or in Europe or other places, not doing what you did would be considered a disservice. Like what you did would be assumed that is what you're going to do. And when it goes too far, you could argue is if you get into personal stuff that's not germane to the subject of the interview or if you lie about the premise of the interview and then sandbag with something else. OK, maybe that's going too far. But in much of the world that has journalism, it would be expected that you ask the sorts of questions that you ask and the standards that many have become accustomed to, I think, is the problem. Yeah, well, I, when you said that not being critical of me, I, I welcome it. You can criticize me. That's the whole point of it. Again, I'm a journalist. I, I thick skin. We can. We're supposed to talk about these things. If, if I watch something that you did, David, and I disagree with it, I would tell you. I would be respectful about it and say, Ah, oh, David, on this point, I didn't. This, I didn't agree with you. Um, 
you know, did you ever think about it this way? And we would just have a dialogue, right? right? That's how it's supposed to be. Sure. Right. So if you criticize me, that doesn't matter. I agree with you. That was intentional um, that the questions weren't that complicated because we wanted everyone to understand what we were doing. We wanted we wanted him to do the talking so that people could get could get to understand him. And it was actually supposed to be at an interview, but more of a conversation that we were. So it was just simple questions. You know, why do you say DEI is, you know, are, are you saying that white male pilots are inherently more intelligent than women or uh, pilots of color? It's like, wait, what? And then he <laughs> couldn't understand why he said, no, I would I just think it's that we are. It would be a shame if we lowered the medical standards. And I said, well, but there's no evidence that that's happening. And by, you know, tweeting what you were tweeting and saying what you're saying, this is what you're, this is what you're insinuating, that people of color and women are less professional, less skilled, and less intelligent. He, that he could not understand that at all. So the questions were simple, intentionally, letting him talk more than I did. That was intentional. And also keeping a moderated tone was intentional because I didn't want to come off as if I was badgering him. Right. I'm just asking you questions. And the first interview, David, as you know, the first interview, especially with someone you're working with or someone you know, the first interview can't be like, hey, let's sit around and talk like we're having beers. Like we got to get some things off of our chest. Yep. Right. Why are you doing this? You're responsible. You're the owner of one of the biggest social media platforms, the biggest information platforms in the world. You have satellites flying all flying in, 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 uh, in space. You have, you're responsible for a huge portion of the auto industry, for innovation, for science, all kinds of things. Why are you putting this information out into the universe if it is not true? Don't you think that there should be a standard when it comes to what you put out there at the standards at X, that there should be some moderation of hate speech, of lying, of misinformation, of conspiracy theories. You don't think you have a responsibility for that. That's we had to get that off of our chest before we can say, OK, now let's have a beer and chat like bros. Right. I, yeah, Which I'm not, guessing no, 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 didn't end up happening, by the way. No, but I would have. <laughs> Here's the point. I've had some I've interviewed as you know, from presidents to convicts. Yep. From, you know, I would, I would have a huge argument on the set with Corey Lewandowski, who ran Trump's campaign. And then at, after the show on CNN, we go and have a beer. I still didn't disagree. I, I still didn't agree with him. Right. I thought what he was doing was terrible, but I wanted to have a relationship with him so that I could kind of figure out who he was. I didn't, I wasn't friends with him. I didn't necessarily like him. I'm just using him as an example. Sure. But I would have gone to, with Elon Musk and had a beer and, and talked it out. But I had to do my job in the moment. And that, you know, that other thing, that that's something else. The next time we talk, it may be more of a conversation. And maybe I would actually get more out of him. But that first interview or conversation could not be that. We've been speaking with Don Lemon. We'll be linking to the uh, Don Lemon Show YouTube channel, as well as the full interview with Elon Musk, which premiered this morning. Uh, Don, really appreciate your time and your insights. And uh, enc I encourage people to check out the whole interview. David, thank you. I watch your show religiously. And I have to say you the the perspective that you have, the intelligence with which you bring forth the information. I think it is much needed and I wish you great success. And I hope to come back on if I can be half as successful as you in this uh, streaming part of it, I would I'll be happy. So thank you. Thank you.